Hello everybody, Math Hobo here, and today we will discuss how to fix the problems that we encountered in the last video. So specifically, we will try to fix how to define, specifically where to define, our function mu, which is our measure. And before we defined it on the power set of reals to zero infinity. And this did not work. So now what we will try to do is uh, uh, assign mu to the largest possible space that we can while still maintaining uh, uh, coherence and uh, soundness. So what we will do is we'll define it on something called a sigma algebra. And it's a big scary word, but it means a very simple thing, which is uh, a sigma algebra is a set of subsets on some set x such that three properties are followed. First, such that the sigma algebra uh, let's give it a name here. Let's call it curly F. So, um, yes, that sigma algebra F always contains the null set. That if sigma algebra F contains A, then that implies that uh, the complement of A is also contained within our sigma algebra F. And I'll erase this here so I'll have more space to write. And our third property is that if we have on our sigma algebra F uh, containing sets a1, a2, dot dot dot, then, um, then uh, the union, the union over i of each of these sets uh, is contained within our sigma algebra, as well as the intersection over i of ai is contained within our sigma algebra. And it's easy to see, actually, that if we have the union of ai contained within our sigma algebra, then it's actually implied that the intersection is contained. And we'll show that here. So let's assume that union i ai is contained within our sigma algebra, then we can say that the union of the complements of each ai is also located in our sigma algebra f. Then we can take the complement of this entire thing and we can say that the union over i AI complement, complement of this entire thing, is also in our sigma algebra F. And then we can ask ourselves, well, what is this term over here? If we draw a Venn diagram with only two sets to simplify the deal, then A1, A2, and we'll take the complement of each of those, so the complement of A1 is the entire space over here, and the complement of A2 is this entire space over here, including uh, the elements ex uh, only in A1. And then if we take the union of those two complements, then that is everything over here except the intersection. So if we take the complement of this entire set, then we get only the intersection. So this actually is equal to 
the intersection over i of a i. So this in, then implies that the intersection over i is in our sigma algebra f. So now we will discuss measures in our sigma algebra. So a measure uh, mu goes from sigma algebra f to 0 to infinity. And this is very similar to the first property in our previous video, where we discussed uh, mu being a function from the power set of reals to 0 to infinity. Now it's simply a sigma algebra to 0 to infinity. And this is our first property. And our second property is that the measure of the null set, or the empty set, will always be 0. And the third property is another one that we discussed in the previous video, which is countable additivity, or sigma additivity, which says that if we take the measure of the union of multiple tiny ai's, each of which are located in our sigma algebra, then this expression must be equivalent to the expression which says sigma over i the measure of each ai. So uh, it says that the measure of the union of multiple tiny intervals is equal to the sum of the measures of each interval. Very understandable. So now that we've defined a measure mu, and then we can define a measure space, which which looks a little something like this. A set x, a sigma algebra on x, and then a measure mu, which acts on our sigma algebra. So together, this forms a measure space, which serves no purpose other than to simply describe your tools and how to work on problems that will arise in the future. So now that we've defined a measure space, we can define something called a probability space, which will be the last topic for today. So if we have a measure space x, curly f, mu, then uh, if we have the measure of our set x equal to 1, then x, f, mu is a probability. Space. And let's say that x was a set that did not have measure 1. Let's say that the measure of x is equal to, let's say, 10. Um, oh. Let's say that the measure of x is equal to 10. And let's say that you wanted to convert this to a probability measure then all you would need to do is, let's say that we were taking the measure of some interval a, which is contained within our sigma algebra, then all you'd need to do is take the measure of a and divide it by, by the measure of x. And what this would do is, let's say we took the measure of x, and divided it by the measure of x, then this would equal 1. So then we can define a new function, mu prime, which is called a probability measure, and say that mu prime of some set a, which is located in our sigma algebra, is equal to the measure of a divided by the measure 
of the set which contains it. And so now we will discuss the why a probability measure is important. It's because if we have a set x, then if we defined a interval a inside of our set x, then we could talk about probabilities in a much more simple uh, visual fashion. We could say the measure the measure of a divided by the measure of x is equal to the probability of a occurring. So if we took a bunch of darts and threw them in a random fashion in, in between our interval x, then what, if, if we asked what would be the probability of uh, the darts, uh, a certain number of darts hitting A, we could calculate that by using the probability measure mu prime of A, which is defined to be mu of A divided by mu of X. And that will conclude our segment on measure theory for this video. Thank you.